We will now review the informed consent document. It is our goal to fully inform you about the alternatives, benefits, and potential risks associated with LASIK surgery. It is impossible to have any form of surgery without accepting a certain degree of risk and responsibility. Our consent is designed to enhance your understanding of the potential issues that may be encountered during your procedure and the healing process. The document is divided into 10 sections. After reading each, you will be asked to initial in the space provided. We will outline the highlights of each section. However, after viewing this video, you should carefully reread this document. Please follow along now with your copy and feel free to pause the tape at any time. Section 1 contains an introductory paragraph and general information about the approved U.S. Food and Drug Administration indications for the various lasers found in our centers. Section 2, How the Eye Works, reviews the definitions of nearsightedness, farsightedness, and astigmatism. If you are over the age of 38, you will be given an additional consent form entitled Monovision and Mini Monovision. This consent form addresses the subject of presbyopia or the start of reading difficulties which begin to occur in people sometime after their 40th birthday. It is very important that your eye care professional discuss this condition in detail with you. Many nearsighted people over the age of 40 who take off their glasses to read do not understand that they will need glasses for near work or reading after the procedure. Be sure that you fully understand this condition before proceeding with LASIK. Also in this document, the technique called monovision is discussed, a strategy in which one eye is left or made slightly nearsighted to allow for some mid-range and near vision in combination with distance in the fellow eye. Once again, I urge you to thoroughly discuss this option with your eye care professional before proceeding with LASIK. Section 3 includes discussions about surgical and non-surgical vision correction alternatives. Section 4 reviews guidelines for contact lens patients for the removal of lenses prior to your exam and procedure. Section 5 lists conditions that, if present, may prevent individuals from being candidates for laser vision correction. Section 6 is a written recap of a previous section of this video and describes what to expect on the day of surgery as well as the steps of the LASIK procedure in detail. Section 7 also recaps an earlier portion of the video and reviews post-procedure medications and restrictions. The next section reviews potential risks and complications of LASIK. The risks of LASIK can be broadly defined in two primary areas, vision threatening and non-vision threatening. In general, there is about a 1% chance of experiencing some form of side effect or complication either during or following your procedure, but the risk of experiencing a sight-threatening complication are less than one in a thousand. If one of these occur, it is possible that there could be loss of some or all of your useful vision in the affected eye. The primary causes are untreated or resistant ocular infection, irregular healing with loss of best corrected visual acuity, a wrinkling or misalignment of the corneal flap, loss of a non-hinged cap, or malfunctioning of the microkeratome creating an irregular flap. This risk pertains to flaps created using the microkeratome only and not those with intralase. Again, these conditions are exceedingly rare and can usually be avoided or managed to prevent marked visual loss. More commonly, patients will experience one or more non-sight-threatening side effects. They are typically short-lived and improve over a period ranging from a few days to several months. I will review in detail the more important points. Discomfort. About 30 minutes following the procedure, as the topical anesthetic begins to wear off, most patients experience some mild to moderate discomfort that lasts from two to six hours. The sensation is most often described as a burning or stinging sensation and may be accompanied by tearing. This brief period can be adequately managed with the use of a mild pain reliever. Closing the eyes and resting for an hour or two will also typically bring relief. Blurry vision. During the first few days following the procedure, vision may be blurry. Uncorrected visual acuity typically approaches its resultant correction within three to four weeks following the procedure, with full stabilization reached by the three-month mark in most patients. During the healing period, some fluctuation in vision may exist. The healing process is very much individualized and varies from patient to patient. Abrasions are probably the most common, yet least appreciated side effect that occur during LASIK. The mechanical action of the keratome as it glides across the surface of the eye has the potential to rub off some of the surface cells of the cornea. In some individuals, this cell layer has poor adherence. When an abrasion occurs during LASIK, it should not prevent you from having an excellent result. However, it can limit visual function for several days to weeks as the abrasion heals. 
If an abrasion occurs in the line of sight, your surgeon will typically not proceed with the treatment of your second eye until you are comfortable with the vision in your first. When it does not involve the line of sight, you may have both eyes treated. However, there may be more discomfort. In these instances, additional comfort drops are typically given. This risk pertains to flaps created using the microkeratome only since the potential for abrasions is all but eliminated when intralase technology is used. Dry eye syndrome is probably the most common post-operative side effect. It is very common for all patients to experience some dryness after the procedure. As a general rule, the dryness lasts one to three months, but may last longer in some individuals. This condition is typically managed with frequent use of preservative-free artificial tears. When more severe, plugs are inserted to temporarily close the outflow drain for the tears. If you have a history of dry eye syndrome, several tests will be performed during your evaluation to determine its severity. If moderate, intralase may be preferable since the flap creation is smaller, shallower, and the hinge position can be altered to spare more of the corneal sensory nerves responsible for reflex searing. If dry eye is severe, advanced surface ablations may be preferable. Residual prescriptions. These may take the form of undercorrections, overcorrections, or residual or induced astigmatism. There is no guarantee that, for a particular patient, LASIK will be successful in providing the desired level of vision correction. The chance of being undercorrected increases in cases where a higher amount of prescription is being treated. Conversely, in some cases, there is an overresponse to the treatment resulting in an overcorrection. Fortunately, these overcorrections and undercorrections are anticipated in a small percentage of cases and are usually amenable to a fine-tuning otherwise known as an enhancement. Enhancements are usually not performed until vision has totally stabilized, typically about three months after the original procedure. They are commonly performed by relifting the original corneal flap. Assuming that your surgeon or doctor told you that there would be enough tissue remaining to perform additional surgery, you should be able to wear corrective lenses for driving, close work, or other activities until the time of your enhancement. Corrective lenses may still be necessary for good vision and may also continue to be necessary for certain activities if an enhancement is not possible. Again, because intralase allows for the creation of a thinner, more exact corneal flap, patients who have limited amounts of corneal tissue for their prescription will have more tissue available for refinements if they opt for intralase. In some patients, the vision correction effects of the procedure diminish several weeks to months after the surgery. This phenomenon is called regression. Regression is more common in patients who are very nearsighted and is in fact expected as part of the healing process in farsighted patients. In some, but not all cases of significant regression, another LASIK procedure may help to remedy the effect. Diffuse lamellar keratitis, also known as Sands of the Sahara, is an inflammatory reaction that takes place under the flap in about one in 250 patients. Unlike the case of an infection, patients do not typically have pain and redness. Symptoms include a decline in vision, accompanied by an increase in light sensitivity, and usually occurs from 48 to 72 hours following the procedure. If you experience these symptoms, you will be asked to contact the center or your eye doctor so that you can be seen. Loss of best corrected visual acuity may occur. Most cases, however, resolve completely without any evidence of past inflammation. Visual irregularities such as light sensitivity, glare, and halos. Some patients may be more susceptible than others to experience night vision difficulties such as halos around lights, glare, and ghosting. These symptoms are caused by corneal irregularities and may be related to pupil size. Halos are specifically caused when the pupil is larger in dim lighting than the area treated by the laser in the center of the cornea. The higher the prescription, the smaller the effective area of treatment, and the greater the potential for halos. If halos persist following LASIK and are problematic, you may get some relief with the use of an eye drop that can be used on a daily basis to help make your pupil smaller. These symptoms usually diminish with time and typically resolve completely by three months. In rare cases, they may be permanent. If you are experiencing these symptoms at night with your contacts or glasses, you should expect them to continue after LASIK surgery. Symptoms of halo and nighttime glare have been greatly curtailed through the use of premium laser technology such as Allegretto and Custom View because of the larger diameter of the treatment delivered. This section goes on to discuss a few more considerations and uncommon conditions. Please pause the tape now to read them or make sure to review them prior to signing this page.
Section 9 reviews the potential benefits of LASIK, and the 10th and final section contains a series of acknowledgments designed to confirm your understanding of the entire process, your expectations, and our commitment to providing you with the best vision correction experience possible. I hope that you found this video informative and educational. If you have any questions regarding the consent form or any of the other information discussed, please ask your eye care professional or call Millennium. We know that your eyes are precious and we look forward to providing you with a level of care and service that exceeds your expectations. On behalf of the entire staff at Millennium Laser Eye Centers, we look forward to working with you. <laughs>